Hello and welcome back to English Language Teachers ELT Under the Covers. Uh, we have a new Teacher React episode, uh, it's a very exciting episode and we'll, we'll get into what we're looking at. But first off, introductions. I am Neil Teacher of Team Teacher with the various uh, outlets that I have and I'm joined by uh, the rough, the ready, the ravishing Rich. Hello everybody. YouTube.com slash Professor Rich in the area here to analyze some online teaching and tell you why these perceptions of teaching are terrible or fantastic. <laughs> well, we'll find out. We don't, we don't know yet. We don't know if it's, it's going to be good or not. Although I don't think this one's going to be particularly accurate or good. It's more of a gag episode. Literally, it's by um, a sketch comedy group, I think, translates to Gang of Gags, uh, Talo Six Chak. It's a Thailand-based comedy sketch group. Shout out to you guys. Um, you we want to are... share and talk about teaching? <laughs> drop, drop us an email. Well, we, the, the actual email teacher in this episode is a teacher, Pen, Pensri, uh, Tucky, I believe is her nickname uh, in the show. Uh, we'll see. So she's, it's a Thai-based uh, comedy sketch and the, the, the teacher is teaching English and she's teaching English to a bunch of Thai students that are all the comedians there and uh, yeah we're probably not going to get an accurate depiction of teaching but we don't know we don't know that could be funny maybe, maybe, maybe it's how they do it in Thailand you know um, you ever taught in Thailand I haven't I've, I've never, I've never taught in Thailand. I've known a couple of people that have taught in Thailand and really enjoyed it. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever taught yeah, in they... Thailand and you want to come on the show? Just, just come on the show. Message. Just come on the come show. On the drop show. us a message. If you watch the show, come on. if you're just a random person on the internet who's come across this show, send us an email. <laughs> <laughs> BLT under the cups of gmail dot com. Is that that's leave a comment? Too. <laughs> okay, so yeah. let's let's cue this bad boy up and let's give a react. Hey, please stand by. Stand up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, morning teacher. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Sit down, please. Huh? Thank you, thank teacher. Thank you, teacher. Do me them, please. Me them, jai na. Because I'm so nervous, ah, teacher. Ah, teacher is a 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 teacher. Ah, ต้องชินได้แล้วครูสอนแทนทุกคนน่ะคุณครูที่อยู่ในโรงเรียนนี้อ่ะครูละวันไปไหนฮะครูละวันปะยังเหรอไม่อ่ะเมื่อเช้าโดนเจาะยางใต้ตึกเลยครูต้องมาสอนแทนอะไรเยอะนะจริงๆแล้วครูเนี่ยต้องไปสอนเพราะชําป .5 ทับหนึ่งครับแต่เนี่ยครูต้องเสียสละตัวเองจริงๆครูไปสอนเพราะชําก็ได้นะครับพวกผมเรียนกันเองก็ได้ใช่ครับครูพวกเธออ่อนภาษาอังกฤษครูเท่านั้นนี่จะมาช่วยให้ทุกคนมีความรู้เกี่ยวกับการอ่านออกเสียงและคำของภาษาอังกฤษอ่ะคำแรกเคอสมันจะเคได้ไงตัวนั้นมันไม่ใช่ตัวเคตัวนั้นมันคือตัวซีเขาอ่านว่าเชาเรียนกันมาว่าเคอสนะคะเรียนที่ไหนมาเรียนกับเจ้าของภาษาเนี่ยตะกี้เอก้าก็บอกว่าเอก้าเชาถูกไหมลูกค่ะครูโดนล้างสมองมาหรือเปล่าเขาอ่านรวบหมดเลยเพื่อไม่เป็นการเสียเวลาคำต่อไป a w e s o m e อ่านว่า awesome อ่ we so me this is fantastic so my 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 initial thoughts just at the start there I was kind of wondering. Well, it's it's a shame that the class isn't uh, a Thai class, you know, actually Thai language, because uh, she started off quite quite well in terms of just chatting with the students. And I just thought if she was actually speaking English there, that'd be kind of a standard, you know, almost like a standard intro to a, a yeah. Because yeah, I mean, you know, like if you're if she's the replacement substitute teacher as well, you know, there's pro there's going to need to be a little get to know you kind of you know break the ice situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I I really like casual chatting as a as a lead into to a conversation in the class. I think it's uh, it's it's great. You can easily direct it towards the topic. You know, it can be your preactivation schematic knowledge. Uh, so yeah, you can just uh, and you know, and you're like, hey, Frodo, what do you do? What do you do this weekend? Or, 
or whatever, and before you know it, you're into talking about past and simple or whatever. And then you drop what you did for the weekend. Oh, and it just happens to lead into what we're talking about yeah. today. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Um, that always happens with my teachers. <laughs> well, that's the really that's the really clever teachers who do that. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not I'm not particularly good at, 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 at throwing that kind of stuff in. But I've always thought that yeah, if that's a sign of like almost someone who's involved in like uh, teaching methodology and stuff, that they'll they'll start the class by being like you know. I was walking around you know, this weekend, and I, and, I, and I found this. Does anyone know what they, you know, that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Um, and I always, uh, whenever someone does something like that, I'm just like, wow, what an amazing teacher. Uh, probably wouldn't take that much effort to sort of do it. No, not really. You just have to replace, I had a few bevies with, I saw this on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, have to, you have to replace, um, I got absolutely hammered this weekend and thought, oh, damn, what am I going to do for my English class with, hey, I was reading and I came across this advertisement. Yeah, that was it. I saw a really good one. I think it's on the DVD for um, the practice of English language teaching, the Jeremy Harler book. Um, and it, they often show it at CELTA classes. You might have seen it. And, yeah. and it's a good. It's a class with um, this uh, woman in a dress. I can't remember her name. Um, she's, a very, she's a very kind of personable community language teacher and she does a like, brilliant PDP and her uh, lead in is um, she uh, like draws, a, I think she drew a square on the board and it says wife wanted, you know, and she's like, oh, I saw this this weekend, where do you think I saw it, you know, what is it and blah, 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 and would anyone, would anyone apply to this kind of thing and then she slowly fills in more details, you know, and says it must be this, must be that. And then she gets them to speculate about like the, the guy who wrote the ad and all that kind of stuff. And that's just, that's cool. I mean, that's the same kind of idea, isn't it? It's great. Um, it's brilliant. And it, it's, it's intriguing. It's just, you know, capturing that lightning of a bottle of what is interesting to people. Um, and yeah, know, totally. dating, it, it, romance and that sort of stuff is, yeah. is always going to be one. But it, yeah. it's is funny that, what, what grabs people's attention sometimes. Yeah, it's like what you were saying with the ESA, Engage Study Act, you know, and, that, and that's really taking that that uh, presentation stage at the start there to the engaged level, isn't it? Adding that intrigue and mystery. Yeah, yeah, to uh, totally, totally. Um, I I highly recommend doing stuff like that. So the, <laughs> so the oh, I forgot to I forgot to compliment you on your amazing headset. I suppose you really oh, you thank you, about. thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I stole Neil, it. We, Neil remortgaged his house so he could buy a uh, fancy headset. <laughs> I know, you can't even see the mic, it disappears into the, the Zoom <laughs> background. So cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do, you get your, how do you get your real studio there to blend in with your, I don't know how you do that so much. Um, I don't know. So, so the next thing that happened on the split was there was some pronunciation drilling. Yeah, random pronunciation just like... <laughs> The, the words that are written on the board are, have absolutely no connection whatsoever. Unless she's building to some sort of, you know, like, amazing, you know, word uh, story that we just don't see how chaos and awesome and all the other words that she's got up there relate. Maybe they're all going to put together. Well, what was the third one? Is chaos awesome? Um, I'm not sure. She's not even touched on the third one yet. But, yeah, yeah I can't the think of how chaos and awesome are. <laughs> Like, I mean, related. Well, well, one one thing you could Unless say. Unless you're an anarchist. Related, you, well, you, uh, <laughs> you could you could say that they're words which are commonly mispronounced. Um, oh. You know, a list of commonly mispronounced words. But ironically, she's the one who's mispronouncing them, isn't she? That's, the, yeah. that's kind of a joke, I, don't know, I suppose. Ch ch chows, did she say? I used to say that as a kid, you know, when I was. Chow. Uh, because I was, one of my favourite video games when I was like six or seven or eight years old. There's a game called Chaos on the Spectrum. And I remember I used to call it Chaos until one of my parents corrected me. Oh. Um, but then, all oh, Awe Sam, Awe Same, that's, you hear Spanish people say that sometimes lately because they know the word because you see it written all over the place, even in non English context, but they don't know how to say it. Something that uh, was, you know, piqued my interest. Um, she spelt the word and then she said the word. Have, do you, have you ever done that? when you're doing pronunciation or anything like that because I, I have done it with like little kids because you know they don't know many words anyway I'm talking like kindergarten like when they first started learning English so one of the things to kind of uh, extend uh, you know 
practice is you know you can introduce a new word but then get them to spell the word like oh we've got cat here how do you spell cat c a t and then how do we say cat cat you know that sort of yeah that's actually the way around i would do it if, if i was going to use spelling in the class i would, I would prefer to be asking the students to spell it out uh, because then they're getting to practice you know it's quite good at lower levels because they're getting to practice spelling stuff which can be useful um, I always also, do it in name classes. One of the earliest classes that I have is like, yeah, right. like because they get they get given their English names. So, I mean that's a whole uh, different area, but you get given your English names or they choose an English name and they know how to say the English name, but they don't know how yeah. to spell their name. So it's always a good class to kind of introduce spelling and yeah, and that's that. a classic. That's a classic like A1 lesson as well, isn't it? A lot yeah. of textbooks A1 lesson one is you you start with I'm your keys and normally you'll do name first and then nationality right that's yeah. normally how it goes so it's like i'm rich oh how do you spell it r-i-c-h um i'm english or whatever you know uh, he's english she's english so <clears throat> you know that kind of thing yeah uh, but i but i think it's useful both in terms of them practicing pronunciation and speaking uh, because when you say the alphabet there's a lot of sounds i mean Pretty much all of the sounds come through at some point, not connected speech sounds, but isolated sounds. You know, mm -hmm. so you've got the diphthong of A, and you've got all the consonants B and C, and the S, um, and uh, you know that's that's quite a, when you first learn the language. There's going to be a lot of sounds coming up there, which you know you do, you uh, you haven't kind of you don't you can't produce yet. <clears throat> so this it's pronunciation practice, it's practicing spelling. And um, I was practicing the alphabet. So that way around, I think it's quite good. The other way around, where the teacher is spelling stuff out, um, I do it, but only out of necessity, um, so or convenience. So, for example, sometimes in my classes at the moment, um, and when literally, you know, when a student sort of asks a question about a piece of vocabulary, and you consider it to be a bit throwaway, and you just want to move on to the next point, so like you yeah. about this thing, but you'll, you'll tell them and you'll be like, yeah, okay, this. And then sometimes they'll follow it up and say, oh, how, how do you spell it? Yeah. Um, and rather than going back to my screen share and writing it, uh, because maybe I'm off screen share and I'm, I'm talking to them like this, then, then I'll spell it yeah. um, just just out of convenience. Well, you um, generally but, wouldn't have it as part of like introducing new pronunciation or... No, I don't think rules. it's something that I would even have. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have it as a planned thing in my in my in my lesson. It wouldn't be like, oh, I mean, this is the stage where I spell out some words for the students. I guess it could be a fun game for, like you say, again for for, for younger new students or lower levels. Um, you know, like a bingo style game or, or something like that. Teacher spell that. Yeah, I mean, do you know, like you first just person to write give, it on the board. Give a bunch of kids. Do you know, like uh, give some some of your kids uh, a bunch of letters and then you you know throw out the word and get them to assemble the letters you know uh, for the word on their desk and you know that's pretty fun it's you, you uses physical movement it uses their listening and they have to like go oh, oh you say cat and they're like oh where, where's the c where's the a where's the t and you know they're probably trying to spell it in their mind or this sometimes i've had students that say a c <laughs> it's pretty funny as they're vocalizing as they're trying to find it um, because I it's, they, that's how they remember it because they're more auditory learners but yeah um, one thing that I do want to do and I'm going to look directly at the camera for this I want to apologize I want to apologize for the English alphabet because we make you learn it yeah it often has no relation to how we spell uh, these words or say these words uh, it's just completely different you know, we, we should have an alphabet that's probably twice the size that has the A and then the A ah sound as well. I think I mean, that, 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 would make, that would make some sense if English had a one-to-one -one relationship between sounds and spelling. But since we should make it, it phonetic. That's the thing, isn't it? Such, since we don't have a one-to-one -one relationship between sound and spelling, then uh, there's almost no point in doing that. Like you can't really say, oh, A is pronounced normally as A. Yeah. Okay, it is sometimes, but it's not always. Um, it, can, it can actually be pronounced as A, can't it? Uh, like fate, uh, mate, um, you know, those sorts so of things. Why do, we have, why do we have the alphabet then? It's solely for spelling because 
spelling bees are fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's certainly, it's certainly. Possible. I'm just joking around. It's certainly possible. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, to be honest, to be fair, I know it does seem like English is a pain like that, but to be fair, I think other languages also have a lot of problems. A lot of uh, issues, a lot of other languages have those sorts of issues. Oh, yeah, example, definitely. Uh, I didn't. I forgot to say this. I'm learning a bit of Japanese. Oh. Uh, Nichiwa. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where when you first start learning a language, you suddenly think. Oh, if you're a Japanese teacher and you're watching this video, um, please comment and <laughs> do a react video to <laughs> to what what Rich is about to say. Each each this. Uh, I forgot what I was. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, in Japanese. So they have um, you know the Japanese alphabet. It's pretty big, right? I'm speaking specifically about hiragana. Um, you know, it's like they have like 48 different characters in Hiragana, and um, one of the things is some of the characters they have a certain sound, uh, like um, well, I'm trying to think of one now. Uh, I can't think of an example, but they have a certain sound, and then when you put them next to another character, they ch it changes completely. Oh, really? Like, it just changes to a totally different sound. Yeah, uh, and I I can't think of the exact example but there's some of there's a few there are a few examples where they actually change yeah so even you know other languages like also have c this. and ch for us or s uh, s h yeah don't. yeah 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 exactly that's exactly right yeah um but with japanese each character represents a syllable so the whole syllable changes uh, to something else when it's uh. in a certain context it doesn't happen a lot but it does happen um, and uh, I found that really interesting. Obviously, very confusing when I first saw it because you just because because we know that English is a pain and not very phonetic at all. We just assume that other languages are much more logical and phonetic, but they're not. The languages are they're all, they're all in place. So and, some, and Spanish, some of the best languages uh, are phonetic. I mean, you know, Spanish is pretty phonetic. Um, it is, but I'm Korean. Just thinking, Korean, you can learn to read in Korean in like fifteen minutes. And then it, and a lot of Korean words are Americanized uh, words taken, lend words from Americans. So all you have to do is kind of not be an idiot and go, oh, when they say Batman, they mean Batman. <laughs> when they say well, Banana, <laughs> they I, mean Banana. <laughs> I, I like, I like, uh, I like learning the countries in Japanese because they're basically exactly the same. <laughs> 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 they're just, they're just, they're just the English words. Like Spain, they call Spain. <laughs> it's just like, oh, cool, Spain. Which is funny because that's not even what Spanish people call Spain, is it? No. <laughs> but the Japanese call it Spain. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like they've fun. taken that Anglo anglicized version. Well, they it. they have for that, but then for Germany they call it something like Deutsche or something like that. Deutsche. So they use, oh, right. They so use they like the, yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of here and there, but uh, it's just funny that they don't have their own version of the word apart from. Uh, England, uh, Britain. Yeah, I think the word for England and Britain is the same word in Japanese, I'm not sure yet, but it's something like Igiri. Uh, igiri, I think, is, yeah, I think it's England, and Igirisu is English. Um, igiri? igiri? Yeah, 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 like the Spanish word. Like Giri Giri. Giri. Right? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Which is quite funny, but yeah. Igirisu. Oh, that's very funny. Igirisu. Uh, so yeah, uh, and, and, and you know, you just mentioned Spanish. Even Spanish has this issue with phonetic sometimes you're right it is very phonetic language but there are certain situations aren't there like for example when you have the c with the e then it becomes a the but if it's a c with an a it's a, it's a cat Pen it? penguin right? penguin i can't remember anything i just and they have the, they have the ch thing as well don't they, they have yeah the they do sh yeah sh and the yeah. trill and all that sort of jazz so it you know but i just i look at korean i'm like this is so easy why can't all languages be like this but hey ho languages are like a living thing anyway so it's not like we can go back and deconstruct it you know we can or reform it <laughs> it is what you know, it is I, I also feel to some extent it's uh, it's a bit of a an arts versus science thing you know mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of like the more sciencey that you make something you know the, the more logical um yeah it can be easier to learn it can make more sense when you use it, but it's like you strip a bit of the soul out, you know? So yeah. it's kind of like, it's quite funny you mentioned Korean, strip a bit of the soul. 
Oh, uh, my so, God. Okay. Taxi. Uh, Taxi for rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, remember, you can send PayPal donations to Brothers Please don't. Don't uh, encourage him. Don't encourage him. <laughs> so, um, what was I going to say? Uh, Korean soul. Oh, yes. Uh, so, you strip a bit of the soul out. And I, I think that really is a, a, a thing. You know, it's kind of like... Um, I feel like language just being illogical does... You know, it brings some kind of art and fun to it. It's kind of like, you know, no one really wants to live in Milton Keynes, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but Milton Keynes is so logical, you know? It's got the whatever. Isn't that the idea? I've never been to Milton Keynes, but the idea of Milton Keynes was it was sort of a planned city, right? Um, it's I'm, not, all, I'm, not, I'm not big into the Milton Keynes posse. Uh, well, so, I, 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 I heard that the idea of Milton Keynes was it was like urban, plan. pl it was urban planning from the ground mm -hmm. up. So it's like oh, blocks, really? it's like this is the commercial district, this, you know, like Sin City. It's like you've made your own city with Sin City, right? Oh, interesting. Um, but I think because of that, it has its reputation of being quite soulless, being, you know, not having the kind of windy, illogical roads, which actually look quite attractive. And, you know, like cities like Yeah, York I, I can with see what you mean. I can see what you mean, but I guess... You know, there's no history there, so it's no kind of. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the reasons we kind of like English is there's so many turns of phrases that uh, emote for people when we're using idioms. You know, it, they 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 capture uh, emotions, um, mm. and that's basically what communication is. You're trying to externalize maybe not just your thoughts, but just your emotions as well. And that's kind of something with um, the Reggio Melia school when they talk about teaching kids they they have this principle of the hundreds of languages um idea which is they don't just focus on you know teaching kids how to read and write uh you know in different languages in their own language but they focus on music and art and stuff because that's how we communicate you know we have this weird idea that language is just you know verbal language or oral language and communication is just the, the one way that in which we communicate but you know by dancing and uh, singing and music and art that's all communication it's it, often it's kind of more pure because it's not construct it's not within a grammar structure you know so that one person that's so frustrated you can you can really release that more in a dance or you know you know doing some sort of art or painting than you can by just you know using words well, we're getting deep yeah. here. What, what, what are we doing here? We're, we're trying to know, talk. We're trying to talk us. about. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, uh, yeah, um, yeah, totally. And, and uh, you know, can you imagine if English pronunciation was just so phonetic? Like, I just, I feel like it would lose something because I did feel a bit like that in Spanish as well. Um, that it's um, the pronunciation. You know, one of the, one of the, the interesting things about the pronunciation in Spanish is when you get the accents. You know. Like in Madrid, they say Madrid instead of Madrid, right? Um, and things like that. And I found that kind of cool and quirky and intricate. Uh, you know, if it was all so logical, everyone everyone said, you know, because actually it's because they have a lot of connected speech things as well, don't they? Like, um, remember when we had the whole uh, Aia jokes? I don't know if you remember that. Just, I'm, I'm sure you were still around in Spain when we were doing it. But, um, it became popular this kind of paella jokes, which is when you say paella in in Spanish, it's not just paella; it's also para ella. But when they say para ella, they drop the la, and it just becomes paella. Like mm -hmm. para mi paella, para ti para ti. Yeah. So they have a, they have they do have those kind uh. of things, and and I like it. You know, it's kind of when you get into it, it's fun and it adds some interest to see and. And, and, and fun things to to the, to the language. If you imagine in English, it was, was phonetic. You know, we had words like faux pas. And we started saying faux pas. You know, it just does it. Well, that's the old really kind of uh, parlor games that you have. You know, like growing up. Uh, there's so many or drinking games. There's so many of those kind of like uh, like almost like tongue twisters. We get it. You know, like ibble dibble. Nominate two six dibble nibble, ribble. You know that like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? That, that. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. It sounds. Do you know, well, I, I kind of do. Yeah. Where you where you have to say you know like this person, 
Dibble and this person's oh. Ibble and you go all the the Bulls are the Dibble and then who was last and you've got to remember all the, the different variations of these made up words and all that sort of shit. I, I think the the one if if I if I if I'm catching you right, I think the game I remember that's similar to that is something called Hi Harry. You go Hi Harry, Hi Harry, the other person says yes Harry, and then you say tell Harry and they turn around to the next person they say Hi Harry, yes Harry, tell Harry. Right? And you do that until someone makes a mistake and then they get a spot on their head and then you then you have to call them hi yeah. harry one spot yeah. hi harry one spot yes harry tell harry right and then you have to make sure that you're using one spot two spot or whatever for yeah but the, the harder version of those is you you use a different word um and then you just kind of uh you know harry's a name but you could use anything and then you just but each person has a different one and then then you have to uh. make sure you've got the spots include the spots with the word so they'd be like one uh, ibble uh, with two dibble and three that's right. nibble yeah. or yeah. whatever <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi one nibble yes two dibble tell three nipple yeah <laughs> and then everyone just loses their minds yeah. <laughs> uh, all right we, yeah i, I think we should continue with this yeah. and and see <laughs> how she pronounces nipple <laughs> continues this before we get to our three ดิสคัชชั่นของเฟลิซ์มันดูเป็นคําภาษาญี่ปุ่นนะครูมันอ่านว่าออซ่าไม่ใช่เหรอคะอย่าเก่งกับครูสิอย่าเก่งกับครู
Well, 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 well. Uh, what can we comment on that? Um, it's quite funny. It's, it's, oh, no, it's very funny. I, it's very <laughs> funny. They, they've really... I, you know, I, I wish I'd see... Uh, I could see more of these sort of shows because, you know, you get a different perspective when someone's gone through, like, yeah. learning English because, they, you know, they pick up on more stuff that's just that's funny where because you don't think about it that way right because you you know like your language so mm. you don't think about how someone might you know when he's when he's talking about the the education and she splits into cat and like lion he's like oh let's go on a safari i was like that's actually a great <laughs> phonemic way uh, that's a great uh mnemonic i guess to remember how to spell like mm. education really i might might actually mm. use that in class <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was, uh, it was it was funny. There was a there was a couple of Thai jokes in there, weren't they, based on the Thai language? Like I think she didn't want to say the phonemic of uh, the phonemic way of the word key because it I think quickly said in the subtitles that it's a rude word in, in oh, Thai. Oh right. Like, that's why she rubbed it off and she didn't say it because I think it, it must be like kawaii or something like that in in, in Thai is like a really good. You can't say that unless we're going to be banned. No, no, you said that. Uh, well, probably, Band in Thai. <laughs> destroy the pronunciation anyway. So, yeah. um, um, yeah. what, what about this whole? Uh, one of the things that I figured we could talk about that I saw is um, she she divides, she splits the the syllables for the um, the words. So you know, like first she does the the lines, and then she does circles around each syllable uh, and stuff. And That's you know, you know that I don't think that ness is necessarily bad at all. I, I think uh, having students have knowledge of syllables, especially with word stress or uh, even better sentence stress, you know, helps. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, she, she obviously she does it wrong, doesn't she? That's the thing. Yeah. Because she's got like awesome split into four syllables at way of song there. Yeah. Um, that's the problem, isn't it? But if it was just four song, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Uh, split split it into syllables, um, dots, yeah. um, underline, stress syllable, or write the whole phonemics. Yeah. I know that. they're trying to show yeah. that she's a bad teacher, but I was like, actually, that's not necessarily a bad technique she just did it wrong yeah the board works not too bad really is it apart from the fact it's wrong uh, like the words are written quite big and yeah a variety of different little symbols and stuff and yeah i don't know yeah it's uh <laughs> it's pretty good and she doesn't stand she doesn't stand in the way of the words either when she's doing that word yeah she like, actually you know, stands to the side yeah, you can see she's like doing it so she can show them that like, because that is something you have to think about as a teacher, isn't it? Um, yeah, so, put your yeah. position, especially in relation to the class and between the board and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very. So, do, have they done any more of these? Uh, I think I think the, like, I've seen different class. ones. Yeah, I've seen a. I think uh, another clip because this because she said they said that she's come into this class before. I think I remember at the beginning. So, um, if you like this video and you liked us reacting to uh, this particular gag, uh, let us know in the comments, click subscribe, uh, all that jazz, share with your friends, and we will watch the original version of this sketch. I think she, uh, she it's the same skit, but you know, like it's different words. Like, I think if I remember right, that's genre. She says genre oh. and stuff like that. And she says some, other words. Some of the comments are quite good. Rip English. <laughs> YouTube <laughs> comments. Uh, 1.4 thousand upvotes. I actually think this would be uh, an interesting lesson to do with, you know, kind of playing around with language. You know, like, how, could you, how can you pronounce this wrong? You know? Uh, do a lesson kind of like I know you previously said like miss uh, words that are commonly mispronounced, but how about you know like playing with the language a little bit and going well? How could you misinterpret this? You know these words and say them differently that would and you know it's kind of so. I don't know. It'd just be kind of I guess a fun lesson, but well, um, Mr. Wayne Flint um, has a good 
uh, a good one on that. He has a lesson uh, based on uh, like predicted speech messages in, in WhatsApp. He actually uses screenshots from WhatsApp. And it's where the predicted speech has got something wrong um. because it doesn't, it hasn't picked up the connected speech element correctly. And he gets the students to uh, basically work out what he actually said uh, from the kind of wrong predicted speech that's come up. Uh, yeah, it's really good because it gets them that's thinking really a lot about connected speech. Although I can yeah. imagine that being quite a spicy language, <laughs> it's a spicy lesson. Because the only examples that come to my head <laughs> are quite spicy. Uh, I remember it being pretty good, and I don't know how synthetic it was because he, he must have uh, yeah, he must have gone through like a lot of messages because they weren't real messages. Because I remember like one came up and like I was in it, <laughs> like it was a, it was a WhatsApp group that I that I was in that he'd taken it from, uh, and of course he blurs out all the names and everything. Uh, but um, but it's obviously it's you know it's. It's from real examples, so I, I was kind of quite surprised about that because my inclination would be to create some synthetic ones. You know, think of the connected speech points you want to teach, and then um, and then put them on put them on there. But the other the other problem is that now the voice prediction software is better than it was. So you can't really do it anymore because it gets it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, but it was kind of when it was first first becoming a, a thing to speak into your phone. Um, but it made a lot of these mistakes. Yeah, and I suppose you Students could do it with also. text speak as well. You know, like uh, when it's like L8, number 8R, and you're like, oh, what, what, what would this be? Can you, can, you, can you sound it out and tell me what the actual word is? And it'd be like late, uh, that sort of. So you could do it with like all this text jargon and the way that people write out words. I've I've seen lessons like that before in plenty of books where they have, you know, uh, different ways of saying the words, and you have to kind of get the students to decipher, you know, the, that particular type of text language or slang or whatever. Okay. Yeah, you can make it even more synthetic as well. We just we you could just do it yourself. Uh, like you just caught with something like, um, uh, you know, I saw two elephants, and you write it as I saw two, and then elephants from the W, you know, and you get the students to just correct the mistake, whatever, it helps to raise their awareness of the like speech issue or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like those kind of things. I think they go because students do, they, 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 they do pick up on that sometimes, don't they? And they'll say to you, you know, I'll teach you what's a elephant, you know, because they'll hear you say something, you say something, elephant, elephant, and then it's elephant, but you've got the connected speech of two elephants. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, do you have any more comments on that clip, apart from it's hilarious, we you know, watch more of that sort of stuff? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, no, no more comments. Interesting. These are nice clips. Mm. Yeah, very funny. Uh, again, a shout out to Gang of Gags, or what was it, Tal Talao Six Chack, uh, those guys, excellent, very funny, uh, keep them coming out, and remember, if you're watching and you want us to react to more of their clips from this particular teacher, Tucky, or whatever her name is, um, you know, leave comments, we won't do it, if you don't leave comments, we just, we'll, we'll just disregard it uh, forever, so you really have to engage, uh, please, do that uh, because we love to read your comments they're excellent um, I've been Neil Teacher remember you can check out my stuff on teamteacherchina.com and on the YouTube which is Team Teacher China we've got some teaching videos there we've got Team Teacher Baby where it's uh, my journey uh, parenting but uh, using some teaching techniques and then Team Teacher English where we've got all our English homeschool lessons that you can use as a teacher's home uh, as homeschool uh, homework or you can you know have kids let them watch them they're pretty good and then we have rich yep and i've got yeah usually got comments i've got this all reach and yeah like subscribe and share stuff i guess um uh, feel, send feel lots of comments and messages to rich comments, comments, make messages, sure you get like him you know doing his stuff. live streams <laughs> with with yeah. video games and all the stuff that he yeah. keeps yeah. promising to do if you yeah. send those comments, he will do it. It's how you feed him. <laughs> Forget the PayPal. That's right. Comments. That's right. <laughs>
comments uh, and likes. Yeah, okay, forget, forget the PayPal. Send money in the post or food. <laughs> send food. Please don't, please don't send food. That's a really terrible idea. Please <laughs> just send food. Send food. Make need, sure it's a, meat. We need to get a box. Yeah. <laughs> meat. Send, send me some meat. Send him some I sausages through the post. Everybody, please, 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 please. <laughs> Especially in today's current climate, where post takes are probably a little bit longer nowadays. No, it's make sure it goes through customs as well. It's very important. Oh, customs <laughs> take longer, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, this has been ELT under the covers. Um, really enjoyed this episode. Remember, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you again later. Right. English.